I've received hundreds of requests from my subscribers to do a comprehensive test of the new revolutionary, as I'm told, still chainsaw sharpening system. Ever since the first chainsaws came out on the market, I think man has been looking for a simple, effective way to sharpen saws without having to have tons and tons of experience. It's not an easy thing to do, and if it's not done right, it is, uh, well, the results are actually quite disappointing. I have worked for years and years to perfect uh, my ability to hand sharpen saws with, well, you know, the more I do it, the better I get. So I started hearing rumors about this thing no, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so. And I looked at it online, maybe it was a year ago. I looked at it online and I thought, oh yeah, here we go. More snake oil, another homeowner, home, another homeowner tool, some, some nonsense for, well, the non-professional. And, you know, I just completely dismissed it because it just looked kind of, well, it looks silly. Uh, to me and I've seen lots of different ideas and you know you've seen the stuff from Oregon and the things that go on the bar and all this stuff and I just have not found anything really for as far as a hand filer um, that really was worth any time so I continued to get more and more requests for it and so I went on Amazon and I ordered one and here it is and it it is, it does look kind of ridiculous so let's break it down so what we have here I think they're calling it a two-in-one and what it claims to be able to do is it claims to be able to file not only the teeth, but the depth gauges. Some people mis misnomer, roll, or mis misappropriate the name uh, rakers. They're not rakers, they're depth gauges. And from what I see here, this file in the middle, which is obviously proprietary, I've never seen a file like that before, a flat file, uh, is intended for the rakers. Here we have the third file, for, of course, the other side. So if we could flip the tool, uh, then we can file both sides. So that is basically it. The saw I'll be filing today is uh, my new 461 with the 32 inch bar. So that is a factory steel chain uh, that has yet, I've not sharpened it yet, but I've ran it a fair amount and it is time to be sharpened. So let's jump into it and see what happens. So let's talk briefly about what we're trying to accomplish right here. Okay, there's, we got a couple elements to the, the chain and the depth gauge, or some people call the rakers. If you look at this from the side, you'll see that this tooth is angled towards the rear. It's angled backwards. And the cutting point is this prominent, this, this point right there. Now, when a, file, a chain is filed properly, this should be, I would call it sticky sharp. You know how a cat's claw is, how it just is so wickedly sharp? It should feel like that, that stickiness on your finger. I can feel that the, this, the edge has been knocked off slightly from use and it doesn't have that sticky sharpness. Now when the chain is new, it's th this height and this height is perfectly set. They're matched. So this controls how far this cuts. If these are too short, the chain will, will take out too much wood and it'll bog the chainsaw down. It won't work properly. If this is too tall, then this goes skimming along the top of the kerf, not allowing the tooth to cut. So what happens when you sharpen is that this angle changes and it drops, 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 drops. Now, if you don't address the height of this depth gauge, then your chain is not gonna cut well at all. So those of us who have filed for a long time know that you can file this a couple times and then every three or four times you file, you need to take these down. And it's kind of an arduous process and, it, and you end up filing the chain twice and it just is kind of a drag. What this steel to the tool is claiming to do is to do these two things simultaneously. Now, if that's possible, I am all about that. I would love to be able to, I, I just dread this process because you know, once you file the chain, then you have to go back and you know, all that stuff. So that's kind of what we're doing, or that's what we're going to see. Now I've filed one by hand here just to demonstrate, you'll be able to see here, this is what it looks like when you take the depth gauge down. Now I have ran the hand file across here, four, I made four strokes on there, and if I feel that, that is cat's claw, sticky, sharp, and you can see there that I have also taken down that raker. You can see how it's got that shiny flat spot on it right there. Now that's at the proper depth versus this one here that is unfiled. We can see 
Now that is, that comes up to the point, that's the factory edge. So let's see what we can do here. Did I mention I was skeptical about this? Well, let's see here. Okay, so, so right off the bat, so here's the idea. So do you see that shape right there? What Steele is telling us is that that is the optimal angle to file this chain. But if I contrast that with what's actually the angle on the factory chain, if you look on there, you can see this has not been filed. This is a factory steel chain with a little laser mark on there delineating the angle that that is not even close. I don't know where the conflict is right there. I mean, that right there, I don't know what that is, but that is steep. I've never filed, I've never filed chains that steep before. I always go something like this. And I don't know what is up with that, but that's not very promising. Um, but no matter, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to really pay attention to that anyway, so I don't really care. So I'll just kind of hold the angle that I, that I would, you know, following the factory angle and see. And I'll do four, four passes here. Sorry, I'm a little bit jerky. I'm in a bad angle because of the camera tripod. Okay, so what do we have here? So that was four angles. So indeed, it has taken down, that's kind of cool actually. That flat file right there has taken down the raker and this metal guide right here has rested on the drive links and that way you really can't go wrong. Is that how that works? How does it, how does it, how does it go down? Oh, it's also, oh, I see. So this, so this gauge, this right there, that, that uh, piece, that steel bar is riding on the top of the link. Fall, as it follows it down, that would, will drop and compensate for the, oh, that's really clever actually. So, ooh, that is really sharp. We might be onto something here. Let me see here. Let's try a couple more here. I'm a little bit, a little strange at the angle why that's that way. I wonder if uh, the big pro saws run at a different angle than the, than the smaller saws. Anyway, well, let's see here. You want to keep, keep track. I mean, do the same every time if you can. And there we see we have that uh, that has dra dra that has certainly brought that depth gauge down. Let's try a couple more of those there. Boy, that's a, those are nice files. Look at that. That really works good, actually. Boy, those are really nice files. So let's try this at the other angle here. I'm kind of getting the hang of it. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. It's actually really good because I can see the laser mark right between the guide. It's for, it can be really accurate this way. What is good files. Now on the backstroke, I'm not filing. I'm just taking the pressure off and moving it forward a little bit. So I just threw another chain on. I've had a chance to kind of use it a little bit here and it is the fastest uh, filer I have ever used. It's really good. Let's take a close up look here at the uh, depth gauge in the, and the uh, cutting tooth. You can see, or well, you can't see, but it is, it's very, very sharp. We've got a nice um, file there, a nice deep gullet, um, not too deep, not too shallow, something that's really hard to do by hand. You end up pushing too hard and, and getting cutting down in here in the drive link or up too high and you don't have the right gullet. It takes all of that guesswork out. Uh, we've got at the same time, not only do we have a nice filed tooth there, but we've got our raker or depth gauge that's been set at the proper depth. I mean, it's just, it's brilliant.
Oh, nice to have a place to sit after a hard day's chainsaw. So what's my conclusion? Or what do I conclude here? Um, this thing is awesome. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be my, uh, my go-to gift uh, for friends and family for Christmas and birthdays because I mean, it's, I was, I was wrong. I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be kind of a homeowner, silly homeowner deal, uh, but it's not, it's excellent. Uh, look at the, you saw how, how well it cut. I did the cross cut. It just ripped, um, rip cutting. Uh, it ripped there too. Uh, plunge cut went really good, really aggressive. The, the, what I used to do, uh, when I hand file, if I have a saw that's really powerful, um, is that I would actually file the depth gauges a little bit lower than they were supposed to. I'd use a depth gauge and, uh, and knock them all down, and I'd go around one more time and just hit them, give them a good one hit each one. And what that did is it gave me control over the uh, how fast the saw cut. Um, I, I could, you know, when you do that, you'll be careful because you can bog a saw down, but if you have the feel for it and you the finesse, you can... Um, you can just get a little bit more out of it. Uh, but this I found to be a very aggressive, somewhat aggressive, um, I, I guess, what was the word? Variation between the top of the raker, the depth gauge and the top of the tooth. Uh, but even when I pulled hard on it and I bit the dogs into it, um, it still, it, it was great. It was really, it was just, it was right in there. It was, a, I thought maybe they might have, you know, defaulted kind of on the lighter side, but it's, it's, it, it's, it's really good. Uh, it's really good. I, I, I can't see any downside apart. It's kind of heavy, kind of a heavy thing with all the steel rods, but you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're getting rid of a bunch of tools too. You're getting rid of your raker gauge, depth gauge. You're getting rid of your extra flat file, extra handle. Uh, you've got two files in here, so it's going to go a long way. So that's really nice. So you can go out and, you know, you're only cutting with one file per side. So they're going to last twice as long. So for me, like on a wildland fire, um, now, as you know, I'm super selective about what I'm going to take out there with me. Am I going to take this? You bet your life I'm going to take it. I'm getting rid of all that other stuff. This is, this is really, really good. Thank you, Still. Thank you for coming out with such a uh, innovative piece of kit here that makes our life easier. And I think it simplifies the sharpening process. I think it's pretty much idiot proof. It's really built, built well. And uh, man, it's about time, isn't it? Well done, well done indeed, I like that. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. So your chainsaw shavings are gonna tell a story. They're gonna tell a story, just like on your crosscut saw, on what's right and what's wrong with your chain. We've got two shavings here. We'll start with, the, these are the, the crosscut shavings. And that, man, that is good. Look at these long old bits. This, that, that chain was just ripping a whole bunch of them in this. You see big chunks of wood. You don't see small, too much small stuff. You don't see a bunch of sawdust. If you've ever had a dull chain, you'll see just sawdust coming out the book, back. But look at that. That's, look at the size of that chip right there. That is a, fi a properly filed saw uh, that is just, I mean, that's cutting good right there. Uh, I like that. I, I think that the depth gauges or the de the yeah the depth gauge setting on that tool is deeper than the factory chains. I don't remember seeing big torn out chunks like that, and yet it didn't bog the saw down as you saw right there. That's that's the best of both worlds right there. I like to see that. Here we have on the other side we've got our this is a ripping cut. Now we're cutting with the grain instead of across it, and we what we see here are these long noodles here. Look at the length of those things. It's just tearing out massive pieces of wood big old globs of it but just look at that right there that's that makes some nice easter egg basket stuff <laughs> that is that is really really good so you can analyze we can analyze this and see that indeed the saw is really cutting and this is this is uh what type of wood is this, this is lodgepole pine right here man well, that smells good, 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 good. Dry, very, very dry, taken out of the desert, uh, standing dead after a wildland fire. But uh, man, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's beautiful.